Good morning everyone. Welcome back to my channel. So today I want to work on our champagne garden and we need to do a glass house or a potting shed or something within it. I've got an idea of doing a glass house because I'd really like to have a go at doing that. Um, the look that there's like metal holding panes of glass together. Um, it's finding the right spot to do it. Doesn't feel like it should be down there. I wonder, I wonder about in here, we're sort of nestled in. The little path is coming down to it. So maybe we do it. Yeah, I think, I think this will work. Okay, so I've got my brown thread, or one of them that I do use, so that'll be quite simple. Now, let's, how are we gonna sit this? <clears throat> All right, we need a ruler. Let's have a little, how high do we go? Do we, I think we sort of need to take up the whole height myself. Why not? What else will go there if I don't take up the whole height? So I'll have uh, maybe come back down a fraction. I might make it <coughs> a wide little beam there. Should be relatively easy to stitch. I don't think this should take too long getting our frame just... stitched in I guess then do I couch couch it in do I just finding the center point there to get our little roof okay there's no no gutters no gutters on this Sorry, one of the guests is walking around the side of the house and there's a camera there that makes that bing bong sound <clears throat> when you may have an intruder sneaking around. Um, now we've got panels of glass. So um, how we do that? Maybe just some lines. Like so. And then... <clears throat> bit of a line through there and there. Okay, that works for me. And we need a door. How are we going to do a door? Do we just have it open and you walk in? Yeah, <clears throat> we might do a door. We'll just have an open if I put my phone on silent, which I should do anyway. See if that helps. <clears throat> Let's bring that down to there. It's a little bit, a little bit off. I think that line needs to actually be more over here. Yeah, that looks a bit more like a door too. <clears throat> I wonder if I need to, it needs to be thicker. So I think I will couch it, you know, because then I can get a thicker thread. Otherwise, it'll look really fine. I'm thinking what I'm going to couch it with. I need some chocolate. Chocolate yarn or do we... Do a creamy colour so that it's champagne-y. Pinch that there. That might work. <clears throat> this is a really old pearly cotton that I found at an op shop. That, that will do. It's fine enough, but thick enough. Mm. 
Yeah, this will work. The other thing is we could do some potted plants around the place too. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's what I'm going to do. That'll get me those nice, straight, clean lines. If I stitch that, it has the opportunity to be a bit um, jump all over the place. So visually, I think I'd be happier. I think too, because it's glass, we would probably see some racks with plants on them, wouldn't we? So I might do some more lines here. <clears throat> that wouldn't be a big pane of glass too. So we definitely need a few more straight lines. And then I'm wondering if, I don't know if I can pull it off, get a very small pot or two sitting on the little shelves. Like bulbs are sitting in a so long and narrow pots, a couple little, <clears throat> just to sort of denote that there's something happening in there and where that pane of glass would be fixed into it, that, that piece of steel there would have a shelf attached at that point. So I think it's logical that there would be some containers of things sitting around. But we'll get to that because that's sort of, we've got to get our building, building sorted. And I guess to... <clears throat> could do something out and around it as well. I wonder if we can then bring the path in again. I don't know if I can find the rest of this. I remember thinking about that a couple of weeks ago that maybe I had used. No, there has to be a bit somewhere. Where's the container for this project? <coughs> Here it is. I'm sure there was a little bit of that. there was but it'll be here somewhere organized chaos is that what they say all righty now let's get a needle that's going to handle this thread is it going to go in there okay yep and let's have a go we're getting our there'd be a way of traveling around this whole thing without having to stop and start you know when you get those little games and you've got to run a line around the whole thing and get back to the start without lifting your pen I'm sure there'd be a trick to this anyway sidetracked looking for the most efficient way to do it I'm going to come up here on the bottom corner. What I might try and do this time is instead of starting a second needle, I'm going to try and couch back on itself. So I've got my line. Because the distance isn't far and there's no curves, I can't see why I can't just bring up my needle. I see um, <clears throat> Jesse Chorley do this. One thread, one needle, and away you go. Okay. Yep, this will work. One little glass house. I had a parcel in the mail yesterday. Now we're all very, very familiar with the fill proof embroidery books. And I mentioned in a video that I realized the author of that book, Jennifer um, Colston, <clears throat> is a 
Sunshine Coast, Queensland girl. And I sent a message to her to find out where she is teaching this year, what's the schedule like. And um, she emailed back and said that she was working out of a sewing shop at Kiwana on the Sunshine Coast. So there's classes apparently available for at least a couple of weeks. I'm not sure if I'll make those because I'm a got a lot on my plate for the next couple months. But um, I think one of my um, lovely ladies that commented said the same thing. She had she knew that uh, Jennifer was at that shop as well. So about the same time, the email come in from Jennifer. So that that was good. <clears throat> is that straight? Nope. So this is the trick with this type of structure. You, you want to try and keep it as straight as you can. Oh, that's not too bad. It's maybe slightly out. I might just... We've got time. Let's, let's do it right, Corinne. So I now know where Jennifer is teaching. I now know there's classes available. And the classes um, are all sorts of different things. So I haven't gone into great detail on them. So I definitely want to do something, but I'll do it in the second half of the year. I've got enough. I'm just jiggering up this thread here. Got enough on my plate. <clears throat> so that was really cool. And then the other thing, in the process of trying to track you know, some information down about Jennifer. I found that she has two books. So I got on and ordered those and they have arrived. I will do a review of the books um, for later in the week. I've had a quick thumb through one of them. So I haven't really had a good look, but I'll just move them into shot here so you can have a little look at it. That's the one of them, and that's lots of projects, but focusing on the crazy quilt projects. Ten of them, plus a bit of a stitch guide, which is very similar to the layout that she does in her other book. I won't go into them now because I want to get stitching. I finally had a chance to break away from the group of people that are in my home, and I really just want to sit here and stitch. And I haven't had time to even flip through these books. So I will for you guys. And the other one is this one, where it really focuses on this crazy quilting and it's like a sampler. So you do all of these different stitches. It's just gorgeous. I like crazy quilting I've never done. I've got a book in the cupboard from years ago that is spectacular, but oh, it's so intense. And it's every time I thumb through it, I love everything, can never decide what I'm going to stitch, and I end up putting the book back. It's quite um, overwhelming, that book. And then I looked at the cover of this. I haven't gone into it yet, and I can see... Jennifer's style and I know the style works for me I know I can handle all of these stitches and then what I need to learn is combinations feeling comfortable in putting stitches together to make something look correctly that's the composition side of things pretty much all of us can do some form of embroidery we learn our stitches I think the talent the trick the the beauty is in, in how we put the stitches together. That's, you know, we can all learn to drag a paintbrush down a page and create a curved shape in the stroke of a paintbrush. But can we paint the tree and the village and then the mountains? No, that's, that's the trick. So I'm really looking forward to having a play in this. And I believe, looking at the classes that she briefly speaks about on her website. Now, I haven't gone to the sewing shops classes of um, Jennifer's and had a really good look at it. I've just been on Jennifer's site. 
it looks like they're all based around this. So not only do you get to do lots of stitches, but you learn the composition of stitches. You learn um, the tricks, I guess, to making it actually look right. So I'm thinking that will be good for me. It um, just broadens your horizons when you can get into books like this that, you know, show you how to build upon your stitches. And I very much is part of the foolproof flowers because when you look at some of the combinations there, she changes her thread, she changes her stitch, she layers things just when you would think your flower is finished and I would have stopped because I'm probably more of a doily embroiderer. That simple stitch, Jennifer would go in with um, some beads or some additional knots and some little extra stitches to show the flower has maybe got little, little uh, stamens coming out of it all. And it's all those little techniques like as much as I like bullion stitch, do I do enough of them when I stitch? No, because they get to a point where I'm like, oh, I'm over this. Where those flowers there are all little bullion stitches. But then there's a bead at the base of the purple bullion stitch. Let me zoom in. You'll see what I'm talking about. Let's just look while I'm stitching here at that. The purple is two bullion stitches. Then there's two green little strokes, then a bead. And then she's actually done fly stitch to link it together, but not all the way. She stopped the fly stitch there and then let the flower come out from it. But over this side, the fly stitch does go, go all the way. And that same flower is actually coming out of the edge of the fly stitch with the bead. It's those combinations. It's knowing, see this here, we've got this herringbone stitch and then these little stitches in between, plus the bead. Very clever, very clever. Let me just take this up a bit so we get back to what we're supposed to be doing. So later in the week, we'll have a bit of a flip through those. Once that my house quietens down, Having a ball, what? Goodness me. You know, when you, it's just my husband and I, and, and you get into your routines and, you know, you just chitty chatter and that. But when your house explodes with people, <laughs> it's so cool. I'm going to come up here at the top of this. And instead of working my way back down there, I'm going to be a bit cheeky and go to there, then work my way back and see if it works. I think it will. Probably breaking all the rules. But it's a short length. It's a straight line. My fabric's quite thick and textured, so it's holding itself. You must have thought I was losing it yesterday in that video. I barely knew what, what was on the agenda and what day it was. Because uh, I finished the video and I'm like, I I was like, <laughs> it's like halfway through the filming, I realised that I had an Ed Sheeran concert to go to. And it was that night, which is technically right, because I was filming the video on Friday. But by the end of the video, I dead set hopped up from my table and thought it was Saturday and I thought Ed Sheeran was that night. I'd convinced myself that, I don't know, he was, he was nuts. So you're probably listening to me going, that girl, she's, she's got herself all muddled up. Well, I had, I filmed Friday, you're watching it on Saturday and by the end of Saturday, I would have watched Ed Sheeran. Today, I'm filming and it is Saturday and Ed Sheeran is tonight. I'm yet to get there. Doesn't, doesn't that just confuse you? I know I'm confused. That's where I didn't know if I was coming or going. So for me, it is Saturday. For you, it will be Sunday. 
So for me, Mr. Ed Sheeran is tonight. For those of you who don't know Ed Sheeran, where have you been? He is great. I love him. I think he's the most talented young fellow around at the moment in music. He he has a Scottish background, so you get that that flavour of folk music from Scotland, which is just fast-paced, toe-tapping, a bit of a jig feel about it, which I just think is refreshing. I'm so sick of the music that we've been having around. So, and then you've got this young man that doesn't have a band. He's by himself on the stage and he has this, this, apparatus i don't know what it's called it's a rectangular shaped device that's on the floor at his feet with pedals on it someone will know what i'm talking about out there that has music in their life um, and then with as he plays his guitar he taps things to create beats so he builds his entire song as he sings with his feet playing guitar how cool is that so when you watch him when he's live, a lot of the time he creates the song on the stage for you at the time. There's no background music. It's just him. So he's Nelly. It sort of reminds me of the artists that have that on the desk and they, you know, spin the records and tap it and they get their beats and then they bring another beat in and then another beat and they layer it and layer it until they get the piece of music. Well, Ed does that with his foot standing, playing the guitar and singing on stage. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. So our concert is going to be at a stadium that usually is for football. So it's very circular. And the, 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 the grandstands are right looking tight down on a field. Now, I've been there once to a concert. It was Robbie Williams way, way back, and it was really good, and it felt very um, compact. Well, what Ed Sheeran's doing is he has his stage in the centre of this stadium with heaps of people around in seats, so picture this this here actually so Ed's standing in the middle everyone's sitting around on the ground and then the chairs of the, of the actual grandstand are coming up as well so we're all focused on that button and it's one man doing his thing so it should be really um it should feel like we're there in in the moment with him and then hanging above his head, he has these huge TVs, these big screens. So wherever you are, you're getting a massive version of Ed. So you should be able to see his footwork on that um, device. So it is so cool. The first concert was Friday night. There's one tonight and one Sunday night. And each concert has 150,000 people in it. Isn't that just... For Brisbane, that's that's a lot. So it's going to be chaos. So the plan is um, I'm going to meet Marianne at her house and then her husband, Kev's going to drop us up to the bus station and they're running free shuttle buses across to the stadium, which will be fantastic because you, you can't drive to stuff like that. You just got to, you've got to give up and use public transport. So it's the gates open at five, but we've decided we're not going to go at five. We're too old for this rot. <laughs> so there are two other bands playing and Ed comes on at eight o'clock at night. So we've decided we're going to probably go about half past six. So we should arrive at the gate about seven and then we can find our seat and Ed's on stage at eight. So we'll miss that unless 150,000 other people are thinking the same thing. But we're thinking we're brilliant, but may not be. And then I remember when we left that Robbie Williams concert, because it's a circular stadium and it's 
nearly below ground level like every time Brisbane floods this thing fills up with water so I have a feeling we're below ground level and to get out of it this big circle has these exits all the way around and each exit connects into a tunnel that brings you up to ground level so you can imagine what that tunnel feels like when it's full of people it was horrible and I was just had my hands on my husband's waist he's just walking forward because he's really tall and quite bulky and he was just powering forward and I was just behind him just following and I was being jostled and it just really felt quite unsafe and I honestly didn't realize that the concert was at that stadium I assumed it was at our big entertainment center which is out in the suburbs of northern Brisbane and it's a pleasure to go to because it's got heaps of parking you know we're near the city um, you can walk into the area where your door is and you won't meet anyone else in the whole place because you're all coming from different exteriors where this one you it's like forcing us into a small space I find it very unpleasant so when Mary Ann said you know how are we going to get there I I said, oh, well, I'll pick you up and we'll drive. She goes, oh, I don't know if we'd want to. And I couldn't understand why because I thought, well, I've done many concerts there. Why wouldn't we just drive? And then she said, no, no, it's at Milton in the city. I was like, oh, bugger. And the concert of old Robbie Williams come flashing back to me. He's such a goose, that guy, that Robbie Williams. He didn't know what city he was in. He kept saying, uh, thank you, Sydney. It's so good to be here, Sydney. And then um, it went on for a little bit and someone must have said something in his earpiece because he goes, what? Where am I? Oh, <laughs> it was really funny and the crowd just erupted. That um, It was really funny. That there, that line is not right. Just need to stop for a minute and reposition that. I just think I can get that a little bit straighter. It's probably not going to be perfect and I probably need to give myself a break here. But I'm just going to move it over a little bit. We don't get a lot of big concerts here, especially the last few years. It's gone awfully quiet, but they're all coming now. Someone said to me that um, Beyonce has announced Pink is coming again. She's always here. She's always visiting. I've seen her. Um, Christina Aguilera came years ago. We haven't seen her again. That was a pretty good concert. Pink was amazing. Uh, Kylie Minogue does a lot of concerts, of course, because she's an Aussie girl. The one I saw of her, I've only seen one. She wasn't real good. She had just found out that she'd um, had got breast cancer and they were starting her treatment, I think, and she just seemed a little flat. I don't know if it's because I was imagining it because my heart was breaking for her. Or she was or not. I don't know. It's probably just my head imagining it. Because she's looking at this girl and thinking, oh my goodness, the journey in front of you. But it was still good. And she certainly wasn't as peppy around the stage as I have seen her in TV concerts that we watch. So yeah. And that's my concert story. So stay tuned. I'll film another video on Sunday and I would have been to the Ed Sheeran concert. So I'll be able to tell you what it was like. I've got him as my main pay playlist on my phone. So when I get in the car, Ed serenades me. So if you don't know who Ed Sheeran is, off you go, research. Instead of going off and looking at a stitch, you're going to finish my video and you're going to go onto YouTube 
and you're going to listen to Ed Sheeran. The first song you should listen to is Castle on the Hill. And he talks about the kids he grew up with in his village in Scotland and then their lives and what's, what's happened in their lives. And the more you listen to it, the more you hear. And there's little sad little bits in there. It's just so well written. It, I don't know. I, you might think it's a silly song, but I like it. And then the, the really beautiful song is um, The Shape of You. So I'm in love with The Shape of You. It's such a clever, clever little ballad with a catchy little um, tune to it. Beautiful little song, that one. Okay, look at that. Lickety split. We've got our structure. Now, I'm going to... Let's get into the roof there a little bit. We're going to do one or two. We'll do two. The roof probably probably could have been a bit peakier. Because I sort of feel like those lines are close together. But that's okay. Doesn't matter. I think I need to do something at the end of the path too. The path is like just hanging out here in no man's land. So I think I'll need to stitch something here just to sort of finish that. Like it's, yeah, it's, it's not quite right, but that's all right. So let's get this little glass house happening. How are we going to do this? Same cross. Yep, that looks good. Never stitched a glass house before. I've got the perfect pattern for the French garden. It's actually my pattern. I might have mentioned this yesterday. You're probably going, yeah, we know, Corinne, you told us in the last video. Well, I can't remember what I did yesterday. I can't even find the butter in the fridge half the time. You stand there looking inside your fridge going, Oh, where's the butter gone? So I'm ready to roll on the French garden, but like last time, I'm leaving it to the last video because there's just so much work in it and I can just get a roll on it. So then you guys too aren't waiting for the next instalment of that project. You'll get two or three videos, one after the other. So it's like you're in it as much as I am. You're literally watching it within 12 hours of me filming each thing. I do my homework, do some stitching, and then I'm back ready to go again. So French garden will work. I do need to reduce the picture because it's an A4 page and it will be too big. Well, it will fit, but it, I'm gonna run out of room. I'm gonna have to splice that thing and add more fabric if I keep going on the way I'm going. So I do need to start doing some smaller, some smaller things. I caught up with Mary Ann last night. She's been busy stitching turnips and beets and carrots and, but she didn't bring a piece because there's, you know, too many people around and the boys were all around and we, thought, we just snuck off quietly, had a little chat and quick recap she rummaged through my scrap fabrics to find um, a burnt red sort of tone for her her barn she's going to do a barn and it's got a real curved shape around it and the roof is curved and it's got those classic big white doors with a crisscross on it that would slide a barn door that would slide across to let um, livestock or the farmer in and out with his tractor so it looked pretty good she's got a good plan and um, then we found a piece of fabric that would do for the roof so the fabric she chose is a red and chocolate stripe but it's quite broad the stripe so I suggested that she stitch down the stripes with embroidery cotton just to break the eye up from seeing those big thick lines so it looked more like a finer stripe 
because our pieces are so small. She's doing, you know, this size and her barn is here and that's the ground. So all of her beets, she's, she's actually said it's quite tricky for her because she is trying to keep, let me turn my piece, she's trying to keep this linear line. So all of her beets and carrots and that are sort of sitting down this edge. So she's not doing an aerial shot of a veggie patch. She's trying to keep it true to the, the story that's rolling along the strip of fabric. And because um, that was my, when I saw the prompt come up, I thought, oh, I wonder what she'll do. And she said, yeah, it's quite difficult because she wants to try and keep it true to walking through the garden and literally everything is beside you. you. There's no aerial views of things randomly through the piece. It's sort of like what I'm doing here. There's no aerial. We're looking at things. But I'm able to be a bit exaggerated with sizing. Because this wheelbarrow, look, the size is completely out. But that's the beauty of these projects is... You don't really need to look at the whole picture. Where Marianne is, she's trying to be within proportion as best she can, which is a challenge. But she's doing all right. I solved a mystery this morning. I'm um, slightly lactose intolerant. So I'm not dangerous lactose intolerant. Like I must be very careful lactose intolerant. I just realized a few years ago that my belly ache that I always seem to have, and even mum said to me when I was a kid, I always had colic and belly ache as a little baby. Well, it dawned on me that maybe the milk I was drinking, it was time to, you know, stop. So everyone was talking about this lactose-free and soy. So I bought some and um, amazing. Within two days, I had no tummy ache. I'm thinking, wow, I technically haven't gone and got the lactose test, but I don't think I'm severe because it's just a bellyache every so often, especially if I'm, you know, a couple little parties in between and you're having feta and camembert cheese. And and back in the day when we were young and silly, you'd be always hanging out at people's places for barbecues and that. So the nibblies would come out and I'd just get into them and then always have bellyache. So as I started to grow a brain and think about these things. And a few of my mates were like, oh, I've just been diagnosed lactose-free, uh, lactose intolerant. And I'd be like, well, what's that? And then they'd tell me bloated and belly ache, And um, I'd say, well, that, gosh, that's me. That's all my whole life. And it was seemed to be getting worse because there's lots of these barbecues and I was buying feta cheese and salads and, you know, the story. Anyway, um, I just stopped it all and went on to lactose-free milk. Bingo. Immediate cure. And within two years, my tummy was so good that I could actually have feta cheese and have very little reaction. So with a bit of research on why suddenly I could tolerate some things, I found out that my, my tummy was working so hard all of my life that when I gave it a break... All the good bacteria came back and I was able to handle small amounts of those types of products. So anyway, roll on to this week and I've got bellyache all week. And I've been scooting around the countryside doing all sorts of things and a few meals at um, cafes, a few meetings, looking at stock, you know, out and about, not at home. And I thought, oh, I've got to get back to just simple eating and home cooking because, you know, we'll grab a burger here, we'll grab this here. Being naughty, basically. Eating out. So uh, this last night, I'm with everyone and 
they end up getting some pizzas. And oh gosh, I had tummy ache. Oh, and I'm sitting there going, why? Pizzas never affect me. The cheese on it is yellow cheese. It's not white cheese. Do I need, do I need to bring that door down a little? How do I, den how do I define that as a door? going to do a stitch there and a stitch there I think where's my pen yeah so I'm eating this pizza and my belly ache is building and building I was so pleased when everyone sort of went off to bed or went home because I had tummy ache anyway I wake up in the middle of the night go back to bed and I'm lying there thinking what is going on have I got a bug have I got something wrong you know this is very uncomfortable I haven't felt like this for years so I hopped up went to the fridge in the garage where we keep the spare cartons of milk because I'll buy 12 at a time they're in those square boxes and I look in there and you will not believe what I've done I have done a delivery to the door Woolies Woolworths about Tuesday last week because we're racing around, going to meetings and, you know, busy, busy. So I thought I must get some more milk. So I've ordered a dozen. I've got four left or so, five left. And they are full cream milk. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, well, that's why I feel blooming terrible. So one of our mates has kindly offered to go down to Woolies and get me the right milk so I can have my morning coffee. And I said, well, while you do that, I'm going to go and film my video. The house is quiet and I've got the right milk coming. Oh, I can't believe it. Can't believe it. See, too much going on, racing around like a mad chook. I get something like that so wrong. Well, it's a good reminder just how important my tummy health is and then I can't be getting into this rich as my father said I should have been weaned off the bucket of milk years ago do I like that I think I need another beam I sort of feel like it's not thick enough there'd be quite a a lintel 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 beam there to support the roof yeah, that's it. Just subtle. Okay. Love it. There we go. One glass house. I feel like I need a chimney, but they don't have chimneys. So we won't be doing a chimney. You know what I might do? on one of the sides is instead of doing the pots, do the hanging pots because the hanging pots are over in the other piece that we did yesterday. So that would, that would be pretty cool. All right. Okay. Mm, yep, love it. One little glass house. It's a bit wonky. A little bit wonky out here, but that's all right. I feel wonky drinking full cream milk. Goodness sakes. Imagine how wonky I feel. Oh, you're probably all laughing going, oh, I've done that. For those out there that are a little bit that way too, you'll be thinking, yep. Shame it took me so long to realise. I'm just going to have a little look at some of our little flowers to go across the front. I'm not going to do the pots just yet. I'll save that for another day because I just want to think about them a little bit because I want to, do I use fabric to create the little pot or do I just satin stitch them in? Then what flowers do I do? How? How do I put them together? So I'm just going to have a little mull of that. I'm not going to rush into it. So for the last few minutes, I'm going to cut out some little random pieces of lace here. Oh, I like that edge. That's something. 
Hello, Bandit. Bandit saying hello. Someone must have walked out of a door. And he's like, who's over there? Yeah, that's what it is. You can hear voices around the other side of the house. That's my boy. He's protecting. Now he's goosing around. Now, yeah, I can see him now out the window. Now they're all goosing around. So there goes the guard dog. Silly boy. I'm just going to have a play with this element. And that edge really looks like little flower heads. <clears throat> And that look like a heap of little flowers, especially in there, that little cluster. So I just want to have a play and start nestling in some little pieces. I'm probably putting the horse before the cart here a bit, but I don't think it'll take long to stitch something in there. So I'm just going to fiddle and I know I want to do something up there. So the next video is, is going to be solve that up there and get the pots sorted. Okay, nearly a path in itself. <clears throat> I don't know what I'm doing. I'm mucking around. That's what I'm doing. I wonder if I trim that out of there. That out of there. Shorten it up into more of a... Oh, it looks like a pot plant. I wonder if that would work well in that other piece. Mm. Yeah, look at that. It's like a pot plant sitting outside. Oh, I love it. Maybe this guy can nestle in with you a little. Yeah, that's better. We'll have a bit of air there so then we can see the little pot plant. There's my pins. I sort of want to enclose the little house a little so we can have a pot plant over here full of whatever's there you go yep I might be able to then just do some little French knots and um, dig out my stones again I'll just zoom in so you can see a final close shot of where I'm heading with it yeah that's a pot. We can put some little beads across the front just to get our ground. And then I can just, I'm going to stitch them. To cut out a piece of fabric to do those won't, just won't work. And I think I'll do the little hanging pots if I can. Mm. Hanging in there as well so that ties us all together and then in these little pots there'll be just knots and things like that but we'll play with that next video very good so there's champagne garden coming together i've still got 10 minutes on my video so let's needle and thread and I'm going to stitch down those two little elements. Why not? Then they're done. So I don't think they will change. So I'm pretty confident we can just do it. And the house is quiet. No one's around. They must be all standing outside chatting in the garden. 
breakfast time soon. Ah, quick cook breakfast. Head to the barbecue. Heap of eggs, heap of sausages, heap of toast, heap of coffee. My milk will have arrived. Oh, goodness me, what's going on? I'm knotting it. It must be really loose. Yeah, this is really loose weave. So the little knots coming through. Wouldn't it be nice if they started firing up the barbecue before I got there? Wouldn't that be pleasant? We've got 10 minutes. You reckon they will? I can hear voices in the vicinity. I bet they're saying, um, I wonder what Corinne wants us to do for breakfast. I know hubby knows, but did he retain the information when I told him three days ago what we were doing? <laughs> I know he knows the barbecue's involved. They're getting closer. I can hear voices coming closer to the the door behind me. So maybe they're heading to the fridge. Let's imagine it, hey? They're heading to the fridge to grab the supplies, which are all sitting there ready to go. The barbecue needs to be turned on and heated up. I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. No, the door's not opening. They're moving away. Uh, no, they're moving away. Maybe they aren't. May, maybe they're going over to the barbecue to turn it on and get it hot. But the girls would be harassing Gaz, saying, "Well, what are we cooking, Gaz? What can we can we help? Can we?" No, they're still talking. Hmm. I think they're doing the polite thing and waiting for me. Is that how it works? I'm a control freak. They know to wait for me. <laughs> Don't we like Corinne will have it organised? Let's just wait for her. She won't be long. She said she'd be an hour. So I bet they're watching their clocks too. And they'll go, she's been in there 50 odd minutes. We'll just wait for her. We won't start. She, she'll miss out. That's what's going on. Let's let's sales pitch that idea. It's only sausages and eggs. It's not that hard, is it? <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. Got all day to muck around and then I'm going to sneak off and go and spend the evening with my Ed Sheeran. Let me know if any of you go... Well, let me know if you've never heard of him, first of all. Never heard of Ed Sheeran. And then uh, let me know if you're a fan, if you like his music. That'd be, are we like-minded, sick of listening to pop, sick of listening to it all and just looking for something unique and a young folk, folk pop artist that creates it in front of you. That's new, unique. I somehow think he will be around a while. I know he's writing a lot of songs now for other artists, so he's obviously getting some credibility, which is great. How we got for time? We've got time. Let's stitch. I might just leave the peak of that leaf loose because I might want to come along there with some beads for the ground and then I can lift that petal up or that leaf up and tuck them in under it. Then the leaf can stay on top of it as I finish the piece and it'll look more three-dimensional. So I'm just going to give myself that ability to have that. There's tulle in there. I don't know if you can see it. See my fingernail is or my thumb is. Yeah, that's the 
looks good. The good thing about these little snippet roll type versions of our projects is it doesn't take much to do your little prompt, especially if you've got your background all stitched down and you're just waiting for your prompts. It's, it's quite a quick little couple hours of stitching and thinking and it's lovely. It's that blooming French garden of mine. Oh boy, I could spend hours in that thing. I just, and once I get started on it, I don't really want to go back to these. So I sort of started doing these first because I know they're quick. Get them done, they're out of my hair, and then I can just dive into the French one. And I still haven't measured that piece for you, Judy. I haven't forgotten you. I just can't see a tape measure close. Gosh, you wrote that question to me days ago. How rude. I will get that for you, Judy. I saw your message again last night as I was lying in bed reading the comments and I was like, oh, no. And I even said in the video yesterday that, well, you've watched it yesterday, um, that I would give it to you in that video and I didn't. I will save it for the French garden video. There's a little bit of a daggy thing there. Here comes a door opening to the garage. I think my milk has arrived back. Aren't they sweet? Going to get me some milk. The little potty needs her, her coffee. Beautiful. So that's all secured. I'm running out of thread, so I will finish that off with a knot. And we have our structure at least. We have a plan. So the next video will be filling it full of plants and decorating the vicinity around our glass house. There we go. Okay, everyone. Thank you very much for joining me. And I'm going to toddle off and cook some breakfast. Well, I'm not cooking. I'm going to give some directions. I'm going to coordinate the breakfast. And um, I will see you all in the next video. Bye for now.